Hi there, Mr. Sutton bringing you the AB Calculus 614 classwork answers on volume with known cross sections. For this one, the uh, base of a solid is the region enclosed by the graph of square root of ln of x, which I don't really know what that looks like, but we'll graph it out in a sec. It's a grapher question. And we also have the line x equals e and the x-axis. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Based on that, we want the volume of s. All right, well, I'm going to start by graphing out this bounded region here on my calculator. So I've got the square root of ln of e entered as y1. And let me just do a zoom 6 to see basically what that looks like. All right, I could probably zoom in a little bit more. Um, before I do that, though, actually, let me zoom in a little more. So let me do a zoom 4. OK, that's a little easier to look at. And now for the vertical line, let me just escape and do second program to get my draw menu. Vertical line is option 4. And let me do, let's see, E, that's uh, second, let's see, second division button. I almost never have to do E without an exponent, but here it is. There we go. Um, so this is our region in here that we're going to be rotating around, well, not rotating around the x-axis. We actually have squares coming out of this. So the next thing we're going to want to do is come up with our area formula for our cross sections. So squares in general, we can write a of x equals s squared. But now the s here, the side of the square, is going to be the distance between our function and the axis here. So that's going to be just a distance of square root of ln of x. So I've got square root of ln of x squared. So now I'm going to put all this together with an integral. My volume is going to be in the integral from, it looks like, 1 to e of this a of x that I just came up with. Let me use the calculator for this. So the fastest way to enter this in the calculator after you do math 9 and do 1 to e for the integral, just put alpha trace y1 squared in there and a dx. And that comes out to, oh, exactly 1. So that's choice C. On this problem, we're given this r region here bounded by 4 cosine of pi x over 4. That's this top curve. And y equals x minus 2 squared. That's this uh, parabolic bottom curve here, just a parabola shifted right to. And let's see, r is the base of a solid. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are isosceles right triangles with a leg in region r. We want the volume. All right, so we're going to need to get our cross section. We already have the limits of integration that we're going to need for a volume. We're going from 0 to 2. They pretty much gave us that here. Um, they didn't spell it out, but that's what it is. You could always check it on the calculator if you're not convinced, though. But we need that area of the cross section. So in general, we can write a of x equals 1 half base times height. But since these are isosceles triangles, we can actually go a little further. Um, so here's an isosceles triangle. If the base is this uh, vertical kind of distance strip here, and it's an isosceles right triangle, well, that means that the height is also going to be the same length as the base. So I can actually write 1 half base squared for my area formula. And expressing that in terms of x, uh, the base is just going to be the distance between these two functions here. And cosine is the top one, so I'm going to have 1 half and then a big parentheses. And inside, I've got this first function minus this second function. And now, let me just uh, put that on the calculator. I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 2 of this a of x formula with a little dx next to it. Uh, now it's time for the calculator. Now, on this problem, in, in this parentheses here, there's a lot of different things going on. To make sure I don't make any careless mistakes, I'm actually going to split this up on the calculator. In my y1, I'm going to put my cosine function. y2, I'll put the other one. And then for y3, I'll, y3, I'll put the actual area formula here, which is just going to be 1 half first function minus second, uh, second function squared. Let me quit out of there now and do math 9 integral. This is going from, we said, 0 to 2. And now that I've got that uh, area formula entered as y3, I'm just going to do alpha trace y3 and not have to worry about any parentheses, and then a dx to get my answer of 1.775. And that is going to match up with answer choice A. For this calculator allowed problem, although I think I'd call this one calculator neutral, we have the base of a solid bounded by a portion of 
y equals sine of pi over 2x and the x-axis. And they gave us a nice little picture here. Um, even though it's a graph or question, they gave it to us anyway. For each solid, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are rectangles with a height of 3. And then we want to know which expression gives the volume of the solid. So this is kind of funny. I mean, it's a calculator question, but you really don't need a calculator. It's all about the setup on this one. Um, so visually, here's what we've got going on. And your calculator doesn't do the following, but that's OK. Um, we basically have these rectangles popping out of the page here. Um, the base of these rectangles is the height of this function, this sine function. And we need to figure out the volume as we create more of these rectangles moving across the function. So I'm going to need the area of the cross section of the rectangle here. In general, that's base times height. But now we can get a little more specific because they told us the height of these rectangles was exactly 3, consistently 3. So we're going to rewrite this as just 3b. And now we have to actually express this in terms of x because we're, uh, we're perpendicular to the x-axis here. And that's what all the answer choices have anyway. So the base here is actually, again, just the height of this function itself. However far across it is here, looking at our 3D graph, um, that's what the base is. So that means we're going to have 3 times this function, 3 times sine of pi over 2x. And now we just have to put it all together and into, into an integral. Um, so our, we're going from 0 to 2. So our volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 with an integrand of this stuff here, just the area function, 3 sine of pi over 2x dx. Now we just have to match one of the answer choices. Well, answer choice A looks like a pretty good fit. Um, B is close, but they're squaring the sign, and we don't want to do that. And C and D both have pies left over in there that we don't want at all. Um, so we're going to go with choice A. For this problem, the base of a solid is this region here. And we want to know if the cross sections are semicircles and we're perpendicular to the x-axis, what's the volume of the solid? All right, so with semicircles, let's write the uh, area formula for those cross sections. So we can write a of x equals 1 half pi r squared. And then we have to figure out r, but we have to write it in terms of x. So we have these semicircles, and the base of each semicircle is just the distance from this uh, function here, this line, down to the x-axis. That's the whole distance across the semicircle. But for this formula, we actually need the radius. Um, so we need to first figure out how to express this distance here, and then we need to take half of it to get the radius. Well, this distance is just going to be the y value of whatever this function is. This function is kind of hidden inside this line formula. Um, we're going to have to rearrange this to get y by itself. So let me subtract x from both sides, divide by 2. Uh, so 8 minus x divided by 2, that's going to be 4 minus 1 half x that y equals. And now, since this gives us the height, or the, the, the distance across here, um, we need to take half of that and make that the radius. So y over 2 is what we're squaring here. And if I actually divide all this by 2 just to make my calculator life a little bit easier, um, this is actually going to be 2 minus 1 fourth x that I have inside there. All right, so now on the calculator, um, my volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 8. We're going all the way across here. And I'm going to be just integrating this a of x formula. But I have to do this on the calculator. Just to make things a little cleaner, I'm going to put this area formula inside my y equals as y1. And then I'll quit out of there and do math 9 to integrate this thing. We're going from 0 to 8. I'll do alpha trace y1 for my integrand. And then dx. And that's going to come out to 16.755 which is going to be answer choice C. For this problem, we're told that the base of a solid is the region in the first quadrant enclosed by this parabola, the line x equals 1, a vertical line, and the x-axis. So we've got a, a parabola, a vertical line, and the x-axis giving us kind of a triangular-ish kind of shape. And then the plane sections of the solid perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. We want the volume. All right, so let's start by getting the area of the cross sections, and then we'll integrate that across the interval. Um, so we can say in general for squares, the area is s squared. But now the base of the square, which is also the height of the square, is just the distance from the x-axis to this upper function here, this 4x squared, which is, is just literally 4x squared. 
So that distance is just 4x squared. It's 4x squared minus 0. Um, so we can write here, instead of s squared, we can write 4x squared squared. Because 4x squared, the height of this function, gives us the length of the base of the square. All right. So this is really going to be 16x to the fourth. And normally, I wouldn't bother simplifying that. But I actually, it turns out, have to integrate this thing by hand. It's a no calculator question. Uh, so here we go. So our volume is going to be the integral from where to where. Well, this intersects the x-axis at 0 at the origin. So we're going from 0 to this vertical line of 1. And we're just integrating this function here with a little dx next to it. Taking my antiderivative, this is going to bump up to an exponent of 5. So this is 16 over 5x to the fifth, evaluated from 0 to 1. I'm going to take this 16 to the fifth outside and put the other stuff inside. Uh, so inside, I've just got 1 to the fifth minus 0 to the fifth, which is really just 1 when you get down to it. Um, so all of this just comes out to 16 over 5, which gives us answer choice D. On this free response calculator-based problem, we've got this region R bounded by the graph of 4 ln of 3 minus x right here. And we also have a horizontal line and a vertical line. For the first part of this, we just want to find the area of R. So I'm going to start by renaming this function up here as f of x, just so I can quickly refer to it. And for my area, I'm going to have to do uh, basically from left to right, we're doing top function minus bottom function. So we're going from 0 to 2. And I'm going to be doing, let's see, this is just going to be 6 minus f of x. So integral from 0 to 2 of 6 minus f of x dx. Let me use the calculator for this now. So I've gone ahead and plugged in f of x for my y equals in y1. And now quitting out of there, I'm going to go ahead and do the integral. So math 9. And again, we were doing 0 to 2. Let me just move my calculator here. There we go. Now I can see. And inside, we're doing 6 minus, and I'll just do alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored f of x, dx. And all that comes out to 6.817. For this part of the problem, we want to find the volume of the solid generated when this r region is revolved around the horizontal line y equals 8. First thing I'm going to do is actually draw that horizontal line. So that is somewhere up here. I don't really need to be precise. Um, the key here is recognizing that there is a space between your axis of revolution and your bounded region that you're revolving. That means we're going to have to use washers rather than disks as our cross-section model. We need donuts, not pancakes on this one. So I'm going to write a of x equals pi times big R squared minus little r squared. And I'm actually going to write a sub 1 of x equals all that, um, because I'm going to have to use another area cross-section formula on the next part of this free response problem. So just thinking ahead, I want to have distinct a functions. I don't want to just write a of x and then use a of x again and be all confused. All right, so big R and little r. Big R is going to be the distance from my axis of revolution to the outer part of this bounded region, the part that's further away. Um, so that's going to be 8 minus this f of x function that I defined earlier. So we're doing 8 minus f of x squared inside here. And I still have this pi outside. Now we're going to subtract little r squared. Well, little r is just this line y equals 6. It's the closer of the two uh, radii here. Um, so that's just going to be 8 minus 6 squared or 2 squared if you want to just simplify it right away. Now to find the actual volume, I need to integrate this cross section over the whole interval here. So I have the integral from 0 to 2 again. And now I'm just going to put in a sub 1 of x dx. I'm not rewriting all of this. Let me do this on the calculator now. So I'm going to do most of the heavy lifting on my calculator in my y equals. Um, I'm just going to put this whole area function in my y equals. So I've got pi, I've got 8 minus, this is f of x here that I stored as y1. I'm squaring that, and I'm not going to write 8 minus 6. I know that's 2. So there we go. Let me quit out of this now, and I'm going to do uh, the integral again. And I'm actually going to uh, go up and yank my input from before. So I've got integral from 0 to 2, and I don't want 6 minus y1 this time around. Instead, I'm going to do alpha trace and put y2 in there, because that's where I stored this area function. So let me just press Enter now. I've already got the x in for dx. 
So this gives me 168.1795. I, I can round that off to 180 if I want to, or I could just truncate it either way. There we go. For this part, this region is the base of a solid, they're telling us. And for this solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. Find the volume. OK, so we have these squares that are rising out of this uh, area here to form a solid. And the, uh, so let's just write the, the area formula for the cross-section here. We can write a, I'll write this a sub 2 of x equals s squared, because this is the formula for a square's area. But now we have to actually write this in terms of x to integrate anything. So the base of our square, that is the distance from one end of our bounded region to the other. Um, so that distance is just going to be 6 minus this f of, x, f of x function down here that I, I renamed. So I'm just going to write 6 minus f of x quantity squared for that area. And I'm going to integrate this area now from 0 to 2, just like everything else on this problem. So our volume is integral from 0 to 2 of a sub 2 now of x dx. Time again for the calculator. To make things a little bit smoother on this one, I'm going to write my area function as y3. So I've got 6 minus f of x in here, and I'm squaring that. And let me quit out of there now. And I'm going to arrow up because I already integrated something from 0 to 2 with a different function. Um, so I'll just arrow up, and I'm going to grab what I did on part b here. Uh, this was the old area formula. I want to put alpha trace y3 in there now because I'm using this new area formula. Still going from 0 to 2, though. And enter gives us 26.267. And we're done with this one.